All right, guys, how are you all doing? I'm PSC here, and today we have everything about AMD, and that's right, it's it's very interesting. First, we see this uh, their successes, I, I guess. They're going for the Asus Republic of Gamers, Alienware, Omen, Legion, PS5, Xbox X, of course, uh, Steam Deck. That's another addition. Tesla. Well, they're going crazy. Of course, Ryzen and the Radeon are there, but also we have Tencent Cloud and Microsoft X Cloud. So AMD is advancing real hard, as you can see. So many industries. That's crazy. So if you look into the RDNA structure here, the architectures is getting with five anim graphics compute die, which is the GCD, and the memory compute die or memory cache die, you should say. It's six anim. That's the MCDs here. And yeah, this is the first MCM design by any company that has been made, literally, which is very exciting. And if you look into the 7900 XTX, right, it's getting 61 teraflops of compute and 5.3 terabytes of chiplet. That's the chiplet that we've talked about, and that's blazing fast, that inter interconnects, which is crazy. And of course, coming with 24 gigs of GDDR6, have you noticed something that they're not going for G6X memory? I don't, I don't know why. Maybe because G6X is more, you know, uh, re requires more power, I guess. Because we're seeing NVIDIA cards here. Yeah, they're kind of power hungry. But AMD is going for always the G6. And uh, partly because they're also going for, with the Infinity Cache uh, te architecture, you know. That is a good addition for their cards. And of course, 58 billions of transistors. <laughs> That's a huge number, even though, though we can't really see that because it's tiny, very tiny. And there we have it, RX 7900 XTX coming with 24 gigs, and RX 7900 XT coming with 20 gigs. And I have to say, these cards look nice, especially the XTX version of it. It, it looks beefier, but not so much beefier than RTX 4090. That is a mockery that they already made. We'll come to that lately. And if you look into the chiplet here, it's 300 millimeters square uh, overall, and the 5 nm GCD is 6 into 37 millimeters square, and there are 6 nm MCDs, of course we mentioned. So yeah, basically, that's the MCD uh, diameter or not really diameter, uh, the area, and the area for GCD is the highest one, 200 millimeters square, which is not quite big. The yield rate should be very low, which is nice, or not low, high. And of course, if you look into the new memory cache die, it showcases 5.3 terabytes, of course. But the previous Infinity Cache comparison, we're looking at 2.7 times of peak bandwidth, which is a huge, huge leap forward in terms of Infinity Cache. And this is probably the reason why they're not going for G6X, because they don't need to. They have the Infinity Cache, which is great. And of course, if you have to talk about a ray tracing here, because, you know, this is the key factor here, and... If you look into it, they're claiming 1.5 times more rays in flight, new dedicated instructions, and new ray box sorting and traversal, which is great. And they're also expecting 50% more performance per CU. Hopefully that is the case, because they need to you know, lift up the ray tracing here. And we'll have to wait and see if that level of performance in ray tracing competes very well with the NVIDIA here. So we'll see about that. And if you look into the raw compute performance here, it's 61 teraflops versus the AMD RDN2, which was 23 teraflops. A huge uplift again. Like, they're going everything mayhem this time. And of course, we've already mentioned first chiplet GPU. Of course, it's gonna have 18% higher frequency and 54% higher performance per watt. That's the most important thing we have to watch out for. The performance per watt, because that will be the... Uh, you know, the winner here, basically, in the competition of GPU. Literally. And don't forget one more thing. They are adding a new Display and Media Engine, basically DisplayPort 2.1, which, again, NVIDIA lacks off. And this is the key selling point AMD is going for, DisplayPort 2.1, because it can literally go beyond everything. 8K 165Hz and 4K 480Hz. That is a massive amount of frequency you'll get. So, why not? And finally, we have some gaming benchmark here. Basically, they're comparing with 6950 XT, the highest end 
on the RDNA 2 comparing with RX 7900 XTX and it's up to 1.7 times the performance in the native of course 4k we have to mention that so in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 we're getting 1.5x again Watch Dogs 2 Legion getting 1.5 Cyberpunk is getting 1.7 which is the surprising part because don't forget Cyberpunk is a very demanding game very much demanding game and they're getting the highest uh, performance uplifts in uh, our 7900XTX, which is crazy, literally. And of course, Resident Evil Village, Ray Tracing 1.5, Metro 1.5, again, with Ray Tracing. So I believe this is gonna suffer because already uh, and RDNA 2 suffered in Metro Exodus. And looking at this score, I believe it should be much higher because, you know, I, I think that it's gonna suffer in performance. Doom, however, was completely fine. 1.6 times which is great and we have the specs here rx 7900 xtx getting 96 cus 2.3 gigahertz game clock 24 gigs 384 bit gtx memory 2.1 support again and of course av1 encode and decode is here finally for amd of course and the total board power is 355 compared to our, our well 4090 i mean do i have to say anything I don't think so. It's quite efficient. And remember, these are the companies that support 2.1 display or display port. Basically, Dell, Samsung, Asus, LG, Acer, all of them are on board. And their monitors, of course, they're going to be supporting 2.1 display. So, yeah, it's going to be very exciting to play 8K 165Hz, even though I don't know if that amount of performance will be uh, coming out. Maybe using FSR 3.0, because that is also another uh, announcement coming right up. And there we go. Fidelity FX Super Resolution. Now we have 216 games support, which is great. And don't forget, it also has cross-platform. And if you look into some performance here, this is Apex Legends, high refresh rate, 440p, of course, getting 300 FPS. That's massive. That's probably the 7900 XTX, the performance we're looking at. And boy, oh boy, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> 300 FPS. You don't even need that much, do you? But again, it's 440p, so why not, right? We want free, I mean, not free performance, paid performance, but a well paid performance, right? And we also have some gaming benchmarks here for the 7900 XTX 4K. And if you look into it, this is the DisplayPort 1.4 limit, by the way. That's the 240Hz limit. But with 7900 XTX supporting the DisplayPort 2.1, basically all the AMD cards will support 2.1, you're gonna go beyond that, basically. So. In, 40, in 4K, again, I mentioned 480 Hz is the max. So 240 Hz is not the limit anymore because they don't have 1.4. They have 2.1, a better version of DisplayPort. And as you can see, Hitman 3 is reaching 275 easily. F and uh, Modern Warfare 2 getting 306. Again, FSR enabled. We have to focus on that. And F1 2022 also getting 353. So basically, you can enjoy 4K, 480 Hz or 360 Hz without even any issue because it does not support DisplayPort 1.4 but better 2.1 and there we have it more interesting 8k stuff and this is the 8k ultra wide i mean people haven't been adapted 8k yet and they're showing 8k ultra wide i don't know for what reason but you know what we'll take it dead stranding director's cut getting 148 using fsr of course in 8k <laughs> yeah that's wow that's quite, quite crazy. I mean, compared to 4090, it's not that crazy. I mean, 4090 can also do that. But, as I mentioned, 8K, 165Hz. Now you can enable that using 2.1. But this Leopard 1.4 cannot do that. That's right, 135Hz. That's the maximum this Leopard can get. So, AMD literally has a lead with the DisplayPort 2.1. And that's crazy. Call of Duty is getting 190 again. Uh, in the ultra wide, of course, and Uncharted Legacy of Thieves getting 73 FPS and 96 FPS. Again, display ports limiting at 60 Hz in 8K native, not ultra wide. 8K native, it's limiting at 60 Hz, but AMD is not limiting with display port 2.1, which is 165 Hz. That's massive. I have to say, that's massive. And if you look into some ray tracing performance, because as I said, we have to look into it. In 79, uh, or 4K, 7900XTX getting 62 FPS compared to the last generation, 6950, obviously. 
uh 62 versus 42 of course fsr is enabled again cyberpunk is so much demanding oh my anyway dying light 2 is getting 72 before it was completely unplayable even with fsr on maybe playable but not so much and hitman is getting 89 where it was 57 kind of playable i mean playable just not high refresh right now you can get 89 still very good also one more thing amy just teased this gameplay here the Callisto Protocol coming in probably in December and they are partnering with this game probably also the ray tracing and stuff you know they have to partner it and yeah the Callisto Protocol one of the most exciting games of this year and AMD already got the partnership which is great AMD is going farther for now and this is the Fidelity FX Super Resolution 3 of course we have to mention that FSL 3.0 and this is probably a game I don't know which game that is they're just showcasing this uh, Unreal Engine 5. Uh, yeah, basically it's showing that it's getting 112 FPS, sir. Yeah, not not that important, but we need these numbers right here. So if you look into it, two times more FPS compared to FSR 2.0. That's right. So they're not going for 50%. They're going for complete two times. Great. That's all we ask for, right? And if you look into the availability of these cards... Again, 7900 XTX coming at 999. Well, they are sticking with the same pricing. And of course, the 7900 XT is getting 899, similar pricing. And they will be available in December 13, 2022. Not so far away. I mean, maybe more than a month, but look at the prices. That's going to be the most game changer for AMD compared to Nvidia because memory mind you 4090 is 1600 and 3080 ti or 4080 not ti 4080 16 gigs that's 1200 dollars so i think amd has a lead here even with the 7900 xtx there's there's this is the highest in amd gpu that's coming at 999 of course we need to wait and see for the you know the third party benchmarks here because hopefully they will be satisfying because the pricing is very appealing both of these because remember 7800 xt is also coming 7700 xt is also coming so they will be much cheaper has to be boy it's, it's gonna get very interesting in this field uh we don't know what's gonna happen yeah all right i guess that is it for today the cards are here amd just went mayhem literally the pricing is the most uh, the key factor here, the display port 2.1 is the key factor here, and of course, the performance, the ray tracing performance, and the restoration performance will be the, the main factor, obviously. But you tell me, as Nvidia or AMD one or Nvidia one, we don't know. You tell me, because this looks very interesting.